decided to jump into project two, navigating the stars. In this project, we'll be learning to move our turtle across the screen or canvas using a variety of methods. You can think about drawing with the turtle on your screen almost in the same way as you think about moving your hand or your brush or your pen across a page or a canvas when sketching or painting. In order to draw effectively with our turtle, we'll be learning a variety of methods such as using angles, coordinates and go-to commands to move our turtle to different locations. All right, let's get stuck in. So our mission in this project is to use our, um, use our navigating methods to create interesting visual outputs. So to set up our project, what we're going to do is we're going to head over here, a file tree opens up, and I'm actually going to create a new file. And it will be called the setup.py. .py specifies the file type, and it is a Python file. We're going to copy this code snippet into the setup py. And then we're going to head over to our main py, and we're going to import from our setup file so that when we hit run our, we expect to see the turtle graphics module appear. Excellent. Now, we're going to play around with changing the background. What that means is we'll be selecting one of these images. If you head back to the file tree, you'll see there's some preloaded images. And these file types are PNGs, they're visual files, visual outputs. And we're going to, in our setup file, we're going to just use a command background picture and we're going to call one of these images and we expect it to change our background image. Yay, we've got some sand, excellent. And now that we have some sand, you can select any of these as you like if you wanna play around just to see what it does. So for instance, I'm gonna just see what the star one looks like. And you have to be very precise when uh, using the exact name. See there, I made a typo. Stirs here, stars. So I've got to trace back and make sure I'm being exact. Otherwise, I won't be able to load the star image. Awesome, that's really cool. A galaxy. I'm going to go back to my sand um, and then move on to the next one. We can also change the shape of our turtle. So again, we can go shape and we can have a turtle in the sand if we wanted it to appear. I think I've got another bug there, moving too fast. All right, so we have a turtle in the sand. We could change this to be a circle in the sand. So or our arrow or a square, whatever you like. There's a circle in the sand. I'm gonna collapse the file tree just so I have a little bit more space while working. All right, challenge one, turning with the turtle. Change your background picture to sand PNG, check. Change your turtle's pen size and color. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go back to the turtle because drawing with a turtle in the sand will be fun. And I want my turtle to be maybe Green, light green. Let's try light green. All right, so we're done messing about here. I'm gonna head over to the main PY because that's where we'll be coding. And I'm gonna use a comment to help me organize my code. I'm gonna go with the color name just to help me out here. Light green, 45, angle. Our next challenge, we have a series of flags to capture. We need to draw different angles um, that are different colors. And if we're unsure how to visualize this, we can also cha change our background image to the turning circle. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that and see if that's useful in trying to visualize the angles we need to create. Awesome. So 
So just close that again. And I'm going to head back to my main PY. And we're going to start with our light green angle. And what we have, we need to set our pen color to light green. And then we need to puzzle out how might we create a 45 degree angle. So if I look at the image, the turning circle, I'm expecting to draw something like this. So here's my turtle. Oh, I can't even see my turtle. So maybe I'll go color instead of just pen color. So that my turtle becomes a little bit more visible. Ah, there I can see the little guy. And I'm going to just also add pen size just to make sure that my turtle as it's drawing is a lot clearer. All right. Let me change my pen size. So here's 45 degrees. We want to draw an angle that's 45 degrees. Okay, so to draw my 45 degree angle, I'm going to work, I'm going to think about how I would instruct or sequence my instructions for the turtle to move 45 degrees. I will ask the turtle to move forward and then backwards and then turn. And then I have to figure out which way to turn left or right. And I think it's going to be right because from the turtle's perspective, we're turning, no, not right, left. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create my 45 degree angle, my light green 45 degree angle. Forward, forward 100, backward 100. We're gonna turn left 45 degrees, and then we're gonna go forward. And then once we've done that, we're going to go backward again so that our turtle ends up at the center of our screen. We could also hide our turtle if we wanted to. Let's run that and see if it does what we anticipate. Brilliant. There we have a 45 degree angle. Excellent. So our next challenge is to create a 30 degree angle, a sea green 30 degree angle. Why don't you go ahead and pause and work through the next four challenges at your own pace. All right, so let's take a look at what you've coded. As you can see, I have coded my angles, all different colors. I played around a bit. I made my pen sizes different. So when the turtles started layering the angles on top of each other, I could still see them. Let's take a look through the code and just notice a couple of things and this will possibly support you in spotting anything that you might have been struggling with. I have used comments to create headings and I've organized my work accordingly and under each heading I have used the pen size command and the color function to set the color and width of my lines and thereafter I just puzzled out using our basic forward and backwards left and right commands the angles and so generally each angle matches the angle we're trying to create uh, I've made all of mine a hundred so you can see my next one C green the pen size was 10 really this could be anything they're just checking again angle is 30 Green, oh, that's green, let's see. Green, I'm checking my own work, and that's 120. There we go. And we have yellow, green, yellow, green, correct. Left 90, and a yellow angle, 90. Awesome. So that's angles, you definitely know how to turn now. It's time for challenge two. In this, in this challenge, we'll be using the go to function. And in order to use the go to function, we need to understand coordinates. Coordinates give us the exact position of two intersecting lines on a plane. To visualize that, we're gonna head over here and go to our setup. I'm actually just going to use our plane image. And here you will see we have a Cartesian plane in the sand and we have our X axis going horizontally and our Y axis like the Y 
going vertically. And we'll just use this background picture to help us visualize this a little better. Now, the background picture plane you can see it splits the screen into four quadrants. Over here we have our X, Y quadrant. So just going to use um, comments to help me think about what I'm doing. So I have an X, Y quadrant and they're both positive. Then I have a negative X because I'm going into the negative numbers below zero this way and then all of the Y coordinates would be positive in this quadrant. And then we've got, everything is negative in the third quadrant on both our X and Y axes. So negative X, negative Y. And then we have over here, our X becomes positive again. These are positive numbers. And then we have negative y. Numbers in the what on the y axes are in the negative range. All right, so my first mission is to stamp the turtle in each quadrant using the go to and stamp function. So I'm going to say go to. I'm going to go 75 because I'm trying to get it in the center of the quadrant. And I'm going to say stamp. Those are my two functions I'm going to try out and see what that does. Awesome, so my turtle went to the center and it stamped. And so I'm just gonna be cheeky and copy and paste this code for each quadrant. And, and then I'm going to remember that this quadrant is a negative number and a positive number. In this quadrant, I have both my numbers negative. So let's see if my turtle moves across as I anticipate. Excellent. And in the last quadrant, I have one positive number and one negative number and I expect the total to show up over here. Done. And if I wanted to, just for good measure, I could hide the total. And it should disappear. And I should only see the stamps. Now, my next challenge says use the pen up function to ensure your turtle jumps across the quadrants. So instead of drawing a line in the sand as it moves and stamps, I want it to sort of seem like it's jumping. Pen up function to each. So it stamps in the quadrant and it seems like my turtles are jumping. And I don't need to use the pen down because I'm using the stamp. We're going to use the full color command to color in shapes. In order to color in shapes, you have to use three commands. You have to choose your full color, and then you have to specify when you'd like the turtle to start coloring in, and when you'd like it to stop coloring in. We're going to borrow this code snippet over here. We're going to notice that we have a full color, purple, so I'm predicting it's going to be a purple circle. It's going to have a radius of 30, and it's, we're going to begin fill and end fill. So I am assuming we're going to color in our circle. Brilliant. Next, we have a challenge. Draw a purple circle in X, Y. Draw a magenta circle in this quadrant. All right, so we've got these quadrant challenges and we're going to see if we can draw different color circles. Practicing our begin and end fill. I'm wondering if we could go up to our coordinate code and possibly modify it to draw our circles. So maybe it's a location color. So pen up, go to, I'm gonna change this because I'm not so sure if 75 is where it should go. So I'm gonna try 50. and see what that does for me. I'm gonna try and get my circle in the center. Oh, not quite, so maybe 75 and 50. Let's see what that does. I think it needs to go a little further up. But brilliant, I've got my circle in the middle of this quadrant. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can puzzle out how to create a magenta, lilac, and violet circle. 
I hope you've had enough time to puzzle that out. But let's take a look together. So I've set the location to using my go to function. And I've positioned my coordinates as uh, center as possible. I've done purple, um, begin fill, circle, end fill, and slowly I've worked through each location. So go to negative 75, 50. For my negative quadrant, I have negative 75, negative 100, and then 75, 100. And there I have four shades of purple circles colored in. Let's move on to our next one. Challenge three, let's take our drawing ability to the next level. Head over to your setup eye and to replace this with stars. And then we just like to go back to our main pie and you can either uncomment or delete challenge two. Now we have four circles in the sky. Could be planets, I don't know. Hack time. First things first, we're going to set our pen size and I'm gonna just go with a nice big wide pen for now. And then I'm gonna say pen, my color is going to be, yeah, take the suggestion, yellow. And there's my yellow turtle. And now what I have to do is I've got to copy and paste this code snippet, which is a lambda function. And what this lambda function gives us is a little superpower. So if I currently click on the screen, nothing happens. However, now when I paste this and I run it, and I now click on the screen, you will see coordinates appear. And that means I no longer have to manually puzzle out where the coordinates are. I can just use this little nifty function to help me determine my coordinates. That's a massive time saver. So we're going to use the pen up function, pen down function, and go to commands to draw a constellation algorithm. Interesting. I'm going to go use my comments here. I'm going to say this is my constellation algorithm. Algorithm. And an algorithm is really a specific set of instructions um, or sequences. So we have pen size, we have our pen color, and then we want to connect some stars. So I see these three stars here, maybe this fourth one over there, and I'd like to connect them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my screen. I'm going to get this coordinate, which is, I would use that. So I'd use my go to minus 70. I'm anticipating it to go to that star. Nailed it. Oh, I actually think this is a little bit too thick, so I'm going to go back to maybe three pixel width. All right, so once we've been to this star, I want to go to this star. Let's go to zero. I'm going to go to 255 to negative 82. Hmm, these stars are all over the show. And let's see if my constellation algorithm works. Woo! I did it! Excellent. I think I can uh, call myself a coding star. If you'd like, you could try the constellation and puzzle out what you would code if you coded the constellation. Or we can head over to the Did You Know section. In our Did You Know section, we're just exploring different file types. So did you know you get different types of files? Different file types support different file formats. And they're all optimized for storing different types of data. If you click on these nerd faces, you'll get redirected to some more information about the different file types if you want to nerd out on file types. I think it's time for a quiz. So a reminder, if you want to do the quiz, you copy the code snippet and then hit run. Thanks so much for coding with me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I had lots of fun mastering our angles, coordinates, and the go-to function to create a constellation algorithm. How cool. Till next time.